In this video, we're going to go over a full review of the Height Y40 mid tower chassis. We're going to do thermal and acoustic testing. Then we're going to go over the build quality of the case and go over all the pros and cons to see if this is your next case. So without wasting any more time, let's get to the thermal and acoustic testing. So for ambient noise, right now with the machine off, getting anywhere between 52 and 56 dB. Of course, as I talk, that goes up and down, but this is to give you a base level of what the sound sounds like. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the machine real quick. It always does that little whine at the very beginning, but it goes away quick. Okay, this is about a foot away from the machine. I'm gonna wait till we get into Windows, so one sec. All right, now we're in Windows. Things are actually calming down right now. few times we're hitting actually quieter than when the machine was off. Okay, so it is pretty quiet. Let me put the side panel on real quick. So before I put the side panel on, it started getting a little bit louder. You can see just what it sounds like now. It's incredibly quiet and we are a foot away and now the side panel is on. Okay, I'm not gonna go over the fans right now because we're not really doing anything on the machine. That's the idle DB of the system. And the idle temperature right now, just of the glass is about 19 C. So incredibly cool on the glass. And this is the rear where it is expelling the heat. We're seeing at around 19 C, 19.5 C, incredibly cool. Coming around the side of the machine. So the front here, we can see just how clean it is inside of the case incredibly clean then coming around the side over here here's where you can see the intake of the case usually would be up at the front over here we're about 18 c so the air coming in of course is cooler than the air escaping by only about 1.1 degrees celsius nice less than a foot away up from these fans maybe about six inches Incredibly cool and quiet. Now again, we're sitting idle. We're not stressing. So let's jump into a stress real quick. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up 3D Mark. And I love the way these fans are. They're not gonna kick in until it hits 60 degrees Celsius. We'll go to stress, times by extreme, 99 passes. So we'll stress it for half an hour and we'll be right back. So you can see how cool and quiet the system is. 60 degrees Celsius for the CPU. 30 something for the GPU. Now it jumped up to 47 and that's quickly going to go up. But by how much? So it's 52 degrees Celsius for the GPU fans to turn on. All right, so we are about 35 minutes into testing and we're in the high 30s, low 40s. The hottest the system hit was 67 degrees. On the rear of the fan up here, between 44 and 50 dB. And then directly behind the video card, between 47 and 51 dB, incredibly quiet. Now the GPU is probably going to be the hottest spot. It's 37C, 41. Now, as I'm laying over here, I have my hand on the top of the case and it is pretty hot. And even though we're not stressing the CPU just yet, about 46 dB. And up here is where it feels incredibly hot. About 40 C. Four. 
41 not burning hot well just warm but warmer than the entire case and the side over here which is the front of this case between 47 and 49 D and then up here 21 degrees 25 degrees Twenty four, twenty two. So very cool air. And now coming off of 3D Mark, we're going to start running Ida 64 to stress the CPU. OK, we saw the temperatures before. Now let's get this started. So we can see at idle, we are around 61 degrees on the CPU and it does run a little hot. We quickly jump up to 94 C, 95 C. And unfortunately that is normal for the 7950X. So after over half an hour of testing, we can see the hottest it's gotten is 95 degrees. The coolest it's gotten is 91 degrees Celsius, which is awesome. On this particular processor, the 7950X processor, T-junction is 95 or 96 degrees. After that, it'll start to throttle, being that it's already been cured over 48 hours, 91 degrees it's dropped down to, and you can see it's stressing at 100%. Now almost 33 minutes. So we're about six inches away from the glass. Between 48 and 54 dB. And directly on the rear, directly behind the top fan. Between 44 and 45 dB. Oh, it went down to 40, but now we're over a foot away. And then, so that's for the CPU. The GPU is not going to get much louder since we're not really stressing it. The fans are off. Up here, the temperature on this rear fan is 23 degrees Celsius. Moving it around, 22, 24 over here. And then since we are stress testing the CPU, obviously the radiator up here would be the hottest point and the loudest point. And it is, the loudest is 64 dB so far. That's pretty quiet. 65, 66. And then the hottest, 34. Thirty three, thirty four. And mind you, just having my hand right here, I can feel the heat. Thirty five. But because everything is so cool in this room, the way it normally is, it's heat, but it's not incredibly hot. It's just warmer and coming around the front over here. Again, we have the side fans between 50 and 54 dB. I feel the cool air sucking in over here. So 19 C. eighteen. Beautiful, nice and cool. I go over this in all of my videos. One of the main reasons my PC is always cool is because I keep my office, my entire house, incredibly cool. 63 degrees Fahrenheit, which is maybe between 18 and 21 degrees Celsius. Incredibly cool. If your ambient temperature is cool, those fans sucking air from the outside into the PC are going to be able to get that cool air as well, keeping the inside of your PC cool as well. And that's the same if you have liquid or air cooling. It all needs cool air. Keeping this PC nice and cool, I don't have anything extremely special. I have at the very top, the Arctic Cooling Freezer 2 
360 liquid cooling unit with the included fans. Then for the video card, I have the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4090 gaming OC card with the fans it includes as well. The case comes with a bottom fan and a rear fan that are three pin DC fan and they're non RGB. You can, and I recommend swapping those out. The bottom one can also be swapped out for a 140. Both are currently 120s. Now the two side fans you see over here are actually side fans from a Arctic Freezer 2 280. I didn't have any additional fans, so I pulled them off of that liquid cooling unit. So those literally come from a liquid cooling unit, though they're just the fans, not the radiator. For thermal paste, I'm using Arctic MX6. It's working great so far. The Height Y40 case has been an awesome case in my testing so far. The hottest the GPU got during a 100% stress test was 67 degrees, maybe 66 degrees, and it wasn't until about 62 degrees that these fans kicked on. So that's a little bit on the GPU and the case as well. So the part that scared me about the case and the GPU is you only have about an inch and a half of space over here between the glass and the video card. You know, not a lot of room to breathe. There is a fan down here. It just doesn't deliver a whole lot of air coming up over here. You can feel it. It's just not a ton. The rear fans over here, the ones that don't come with the case, I added those on my own, so you will need to add your own. These blow cool air over here. They also blow air over the rear of the card. The rear of the card has its own heatsink back here. The Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4090 gaming OC card does a great job at keeping nice and cool. The case itself, again, I thought it would be a little tight and it actually did an amazing job. Now with the CPU, the CPU is a 7900 XT AMD processor, the Ryzen 9. It is a heat monster as well. And during testing, it only hit 95 degrees for a few seconds. Typically it would go down to 94, 93, 92, even 91 degrees. And it wasn't thermally throttling. 95 or 96 degrees is the T junction. And it did a great job staying below that. So as I mentioned, these two fans back here don't come with the case, but they are incredibly needed in this case. If not, there is no airflow coming in other than the fan here down at the bottom. The fan down here at the bottom is a 120 millimeter three pin DC fan. So it's not PWM. It can't speed up when it's needed or power down when it's not. Mind you, you can control the voltages within the BIOS, which will of course control the speed, but that becomes a little bit more difficult. PWM definitely is where it's at. This fan down here is a 120 also a non rgb fan so these two fans come together this has to always be a 120 you can't change it to a 140 this is also a dc fan the other fans in the case is from the arctic freezer 2 360 millimeter great fans and then from the video card itself again you do need to buy those two fans on the side the case is limited to an ATX motherboard. You can't put an EATX board in there, but that's not totally a bad thing. There are plenty of great ATX motherboards out there. Coming around over here along the back. We also have tons of room for incredible cable management. Again, down here, you can fit a 140 and at the 120, there isn't a lot of anything that'll get in the way of spinning these fans. It's spinning perfectly fine. And then you can put a 140 in there and it's not going to hit those cables as well. Just move them around. It'll work fine. You can see how we routed all of the cables over here. Plenty of space. One thing I don't like about it is you can either fit one 3.5 inch drive or two 2.5 inch, be it mechanical or SSD drives in there. So not a great thing for storage, but mind you, most are going to be using the M.2 slots on the motherboard itself. Although of course they will detract from the by 16 on the video card or by eight or even worse. The power supply was amazing. Maybe not the power supply itself, but the space to put it in there. Typically when you slide in a power supply, you're stuck. You don't have room to put any cables in between the power supply and the ceiling of the power supply shroud. But here you can actually fit cables in between. There's plenty of space there. That's awesome on iBuyPower. The rear gives you plenty of space to put in some CPU or liquid cooling mounts or whatever you want to put back there. Gives you plenty of space to be able to fit just about anything. Along the rear here, something I don't like that's becoming kind of a trend is the IO, regular where you put in your USB and everything, it flushed out instead of being flushed in and that doesn't give you a good place back here to grip your case when you're carrying it around so it makes it a little bit cumbersome 
Being that it's a height case, the height Y40 and the height Y60 both had it. The half height cards over here make it a bit awkward, but mind you, more than a video card, a lot of times we don't use specialty things. You will need a card, and a lot of times they will be half height cards. Pick your battles on that one, but at least you know with this case what you're getting into. Now, normally for dual height cards, it would stop right here and then you would have another two inches worth of space but because this is a almost four slot card that's why we have so little space the front of the case comes with two usb 3.0 ports i wish they had four but they only have two then they have one for hd audio and microphone mind you it brings an adapter that you can plug in here and then you can plug in individually one on the microphone side and one on the headphone side and then they do have the additional USB type C. The way I would have preferred to have seen it would two USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, and then the additional type C, but you get what you get on this case. Now on the bottom of this case, obviously we have that fan down here and there are a few cutouts right along here to aid in that airflow right in front of that video card so it sucks up that cool air. Then right over here, like we have this cable already, you can fit in a bunch of cables on the rear of that card. Then we have another right over here, just below all the IO, the USB ports, the HD audio, they have them all in the perfect places. Now, unlike the Height Y60, this card is removable. The Height Y60 was kind of locked in the metal frame over here so you could remove the PCIe card, but then you had to kind of seesaw where you wanted it to go. You couldn't totally remove it, making it a little bit difficult to access all the ports behind that ribbon. They figured it out on this case. They did a great job. So a correction on the Y60. So while it is a seesaw effect, you pull and push it in and out. After removing these two screws, I was able to get that. I didn't realize there's an additional four screws. that you have to remove to remove this metal piece so that you can finally remove this. You can do it on the Y60, but it's a lot more of a pain in the butt. Like the 60, they have the 90 degrees openings right over here so that you can slide cables out from the rear or cables into the rear. So perfect over there. They also have right up here, you can't see it, but some grommets so that you can do the same, slide cables in and pull cables out. Now, along the top of the case, you are able to fit your hands right in a little groove back here to take the top panel off. And then, like I was mentioning back here, there is the perfect holes right over here to fit in your eight pins or your eight plus four pin EPS power or two four pins, whatever you may have, they have the perfect spots for you right up here. And then of course, perfect for up to a 360 millimeter radiator. And then right over here, while you're working on everything, maybe you have some screws or put whatever right over here, you have that space to do it. What they did here was perfect. As you saw during my build video, I forgot to put this in there and the way that they implemented this, it was incredibly easy. Now, unlike other cases that maybe you might be able to remove this, if you remove this, you remove all the cabling and the radiator as well. And that makes it very cumbersome. It's not cumbersome here. They did an amazing job in my opinion. And then as you saw me remove this, it's not just a pretty red piece, though they also do come in other colors. The color is nice, but the color is also, it feels like kind of the paint you use on cars, automotive paint. It feels beautiful, it's nice to the touch, and it's nice and cool. Now, the bad part about it is you might have been able to hear it as I kind of clicked it in. The case is made out of ABS and steel. So plastic and steel, unlike aluminum, plastic and steel don't really act so much as a heat sink as aluminum does. So it does trap in a little heat, but mind you, it dissipates that heat nicely no matter what. I was a bit skeptical when I started reviewing this case. The Y40, I didn't think was going to be a great case, but I was actually incredibly surprised. And for those of you wondering, there's an additional three inches of space from the end of that 4090 till the glass. So you could fit a tremendous card in there in case you needed it. So as you saw, I did have pros and cons throughout the review. The cons being you can't fit an EATX motherboard in there, but at the same time, it's kind of a pro because that means the case is a little bit smaller. If you can fit an EATX in there, the case has to be a little bit bigger. Now, one thing there cannot be a pro on, 
because of the nature of the beast is the amount of drives that you can fit in there. You can fit either two 2.5 inch SSDs or mechanical drives or one 3.5 inch drive. You don't have space for anything else anywhere else in the case, unless you don't mind laying some SSDs on the bottom of that case. I love the way that that looks, looking from that front of the glass, seeing all that space you have between the motherboard and that video card. With that space, there's going to be some air, but there's not going to be a ton because the bottom fan and the rear fan are both 120 millimeter fans. On top of that, they aren't RGB, which is not going to bother a lot of people. The part that bothers me is they're three pin DC fans, meaning they're not PWM. You have to manually control the voltages. Now, mind you, some motherboards allow you to change the fan curves and everything, even on DCs, but it's a lot easier if they were PWM. And for me, I would prefer them be RGB as well. As we saw with the Y60, the Y40, the way that the riser cable is makes it a little bit difficult like with any riser card though to get to all the ports on the motherboard if you needed to and on top of that it is abs and steel no aluminum so it doesn't really act as a heatsink itself and the biggie for me is these two side fans over here they didn't come with the case i needed to buy those separately now at the same time even with these fans as well this one and the bottom one i'm probably going to end up changing them so if they were these fans over here i'd end up changing them as well that way if they don't include it it saves you a little money now the pros are kind of in line with the cons but there are a few more pros than there were cons first off that ceiling I showed you earlier where you can remove it and you have a lot of access to the motherboard and to everything else down there. Plus you have a little tray for screws and anything else you may need there. Now, mind you, some other cases have it that you could slide that tray out, but then all those cables go with it and it becomes a little bit of a hassle. I like it this way. The other plus was all those grommets or holes that they had along the top, along the tray, along the side, along the bottom and everything so that you can route cables any which way you wanted to so that it can keep looking just as beautiful as you wanted to i'm incredibly impressed again with that over here and then back over here it's got all the cables it needs to and then some additional there is a little tiny bit of a rat's nest but nothing too bad there that's because again they give you all the space you need i had plenty of space with that power supply not only in the front to fit more cables but along the top so that i can fit cables in in through those grommets and everything i didn't have it slapping the ceiling of the power supply shroud so i think they did a great job there so yeah, plenty of space throughout the case for anything you need. Now saying that, even though there is plenty of space, it does feel a little bit crowded, but it's only crowded if anything because of the vertical card. Just looks a little bit weird considering the alternative would be the normal horizontal, but it does look sexy. I'm thinking myself of replacing my Corsair 5000D with this one. Let me know what you think down below. So the case is 18.5 inches tall, 9.5 inches wide, and 17 inches long. So it is not a large case, and it is in a small case as well. It's just right. <laughs> and again, being that I'm considering maybe swapping this case for my case over there, the Corsair 5000D, I think it's doing a pretty good job. So with that said, I think the Height Y40 is an amazing case at a great price. I think they saw what everybody said about the Y60 and they're like, you know what? Let's make those changes real quick. Now, mind you, I do like the little curve that they had right over here for the 60, but the way it is here, you know, you just see that straight line down there and it's a little teeny tiny line, maybe five hairs thick, if anything really thick hair but it doesn't detract from how beautiful it looks from the front from the side and even if you were looking at it this way that's not going to bother you too much i think it's beautiful the antenna does not come with it that's part of the motherboard the asrock x670e pro rs motherboard which you will also see in the build video as well which did a great job but anyway you can find all the parts and everything i use in this build down in the description below along with their amazon affiliate links so that's my review for the height y40 let me know what you think about it down in the comments below do you agree with me do you disagree with me what do you think of it overall iggy with this bites for you out see you guys